All right, we are back. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Andre Alessandrescu. He's a research scientist at Facebook. And I don't think he's met a template he doesn't like. <laughs> and he's going to come here and blow our minds talking about one of C11's most important features, arguably, certainly for Stefan variadic templates. Please, a big warm uh, applause for Andre Alexandrescu. Thanks. Thanks very much for inviting me to the organizers. <clears throat> Gotta say there's a lot of work going into the organization of this all. It's uh, from, the, you know, from the backstage, it's pretty much like a military operation. It's you know, very specific and very clear organization. They aren't that efficient. They aren't that efficient as C++ is. <laughs> and I gotta say, so today, um, I, you know, generally I like to project this cool demeanor, uh, emotionless guy, but I gotta say you, I gotta tell you, number one, so we have the Bjarne speaking, number two, we have Hans Bohm, the consumer researcher, probably wrote more papers than I read. <laughs> then we have uh, Stefan, who's this awesome hacker and, you know, the fastest speaker I could ever follow. <laughs> and... Then there's you, and you know, <laughs> how would you feel, right? So my heart is pumping real, real hard right now, and my stomach hurts, and uh, then I looked on Twitter and said, you know, there must be people who still, you know, kind of, I must have fans out there. <laughs> I think that word is misspelled, actually. <laughs> I'm not sure, really. All righty. Well, with this, uh, let's proceed <laughs> in good spirits. I'm going to talk about three things. Um, motivation fundamentals of veridic templates. We're going to go through the steps of implementing a true veridic function, see exactly what it takes to make uh, the sausage of, uh, of a true veridic function, which is a bit more difficult than it could. And then I'm going to discuss a bit uh, about STD tuple, and again, what sort of uh, tricks go into it? Once we make uh, these, uh, once we do these exercises, I'm sure we all will, will be very well equipped to tackle very interesting uh, problems that can be solved with veridic templates. All right. So uh, the motivation behind veridic templates were, uh, first of all, you know, we wanted to, we had this desire to define uh, types of veridic functions. We've had this desire forever. Uh, printf being like this uh, absolutely uh, archetypal function that is very fast, very good, except it's extremely unsafe. And I'm probably, you know, uh, I'm not sure about you, but, you know, I uh, passed the wrong arguments to printf. And I was very thankful to see that uh, modern compilers introduce, at least when you, put, uh, when you pass a literal string in there, they're going to take care of it and they're going to warn you that you're not passing the right types in there. <clears throat> Actually, you know, two more, so we pass a size t. I, I don't know what the hell that is, right? So it's size t is like percent z, you know, write that down. <laughs> All right. So you want to uh, do function forwarding, you want to forward, like I want to log a function call, and that function should take any number of parameters, just adapt itself. And we want to do logging before and after, for example. That's a nice, uh, that's a nice motivating example. Uh, we want to define the so-called algebraic types without contortions. Uh, I think they are quite popular right now, variant and tuple. Variant would be a sum type because it can hold one value of a given type at any time, but only one. What's a, var what's, what's a, what, what's a variant good for? For example, a database column, right? A database field, which is essentially dynamically bound. You don't know the exact type. Inheritance is not the most appropriate mechanism for that because the universe of types in a database is, uh, you know, is limited, is known, is finite. <clears throat> so uh, it's very good to have a sum type there that represents I, you know, any of the, those uh, um, elements of that universe. Uh, tuple would be a product type which would hold you know, a juxtaposition of different uh, values of different types, uh, arbitrary long and arbitrary, you know, arbitrary values. And then we are, I'm going, not going to insist too much on that, but I'm going to talk a bit uh, to specify settings and parameters in policy-based design, a subject that is, of course, dear to my heart. All right, fundamentals. Uh, it starts very easy, doesn't it always? Um, 
uh, you may define a template class that uh, takes type name dot dot dot. By the way, type name can be replaced with class, but you know, it kind of uh, came back on Vogue uh, since the dot 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 came about because you know, class dot 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 is not one or more classes, it's more one or more types. So it's type name dot dot dot, or you can uh, define a function that uh, takes type dot dot dot. Next slide is going, uh, this slide is, uh, is essentially <coughs> very important for our under understanding of traits of uh, uh, template variety, so it's extremely important. It's the, the, key st the, 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 you know, the, the key to understanding variety templates is to understand that in, uh, in the examples, uh, in these examples, T's and V's are nothing you know about. Are not, are like, it's a new kind. These are new kinds. They're not types, they're not values, they're like nothing in existing C++, in C++ without Veradix. So this is not a type, and this is not a value, right? <clears throat> so you can't say, well, let me uh, create a local type there for this to give it a different name. You can't do that. Uh, you also cannot say, well, let me make a copy of this, uh, these values, uh, these parameters, let me make a copy real quick here. Uh, that's also not gonna work. You cannot even instantiate that, that uh, type at all. So T's and V's, these are new entities, new kinds, right? Therefore, they're going to obey new rules. So forget everything you know about, uh, you know, what applies to regular entities in C++. We're dealing with a completely new universe here, right? All right, uh, an interesting detail, either T's or V's may be actually potentially empty. And that becomes bizarre once you start to uh, uh, talk about things that are empty and they have a name, however. So, you know, we're going to treat them differently. And in particular, there's exactly two things you can do with them. Number one, you can, I, one is useless. So there's one thing that's useful and doable. Uh, the useless thing is size of dot, dot, dot. You can apply size of dot, dot, dot to, a, you know, to a, a list of types or a list of values, and what do you get back? You're going to get back the number of elements in the list. It's not the cumulative size of the, the, the entities in that list, it's actually the number of elements in the list. Potentially confusing, uh, but that's not the point. Uh, the interesting thing is this is not a pr doesn't need to be a primitive for a simple reason it could be actually done you know, in other ways. Uh, the important operation you can do is to expand back the list. And look at this example here. I have a laser. Uh, look at this example here. So we have a function that takes, so it's, uh, it's parameterized on t's, a list of types. And it says, uh, well, I'm going to take, you know, the spaceship era or whatever, you know, the Twitter era, um, uh, double ampersand, which is uh, our value reference, and it's going to take a set of val list of values. <clears throat> now here's what's going to happen. Uh, inside this uh, fun call, it's going to forward to another function, you know, just uh, for the sake of example, it uh, adds a new argument, this uh, floating point value, and it adds a floating point value at the end, um, just because I can. And here, this is the interesting part. The interesting part is uh, we apply the expansion operator, which is very fittingly dot, 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 <laughs> and What's going to happen here is that dot, dot, dot is going to expand everything uh, that is to its left in a ways that we're going to explore, okay? So this is the expansion operator, and what's going to happen is that it's going to essentially expand the, 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 the list. What do you think happens if you uh, actually pass an empty list, you call fun with no arguments? Well, something very interesting is going to happen. And you know, this is going to reveal that it's uh, sort of not textual expansion, it's smart textual expansion. You see that, uh, you see this comma here, right? We have a comma here, and we have a comma here, and if we used textual expansion on a, the empty list, this, nothing would come here, and we'd have two, comma, two commas in a row, right? Um, in reality, the, one of the commas, I don't know which, is gonna disappear. Right? One of them is going to disappear. Automagically. This is uh, part of the expansion magic, right? 
So essentially, it's not textual expansion, uh, although for the most part, you can think of it as one, as I'm going to uh, explain next. So there are certain rules that apply to expansion, what you can expand and in what context, right? Number one, we have this dot dot dot, and where this is a list like we, we just discussed, it expands into the comma separated list. Now here's the thing, do you have sharp eyes? Because I gotta tell you, the font here and the font here, they're different. <laughs> I'm not kidding. This is Courier New, and this is Bachelorshell.inlate, which is essentially, it's a sans serif font in this, uh, on the, in this slide. So this is actually the literary dot, 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 the ellipsis. Okay, it's the you know it's the elements of style dot dot dot, and this is the actual punctuation in the language dot dot dot. All right, that makes it a bit difficult to discuss things, right? All right, so very simple. We start very simple. T's dot 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 expands into the actual you know the actual list of the types. Second, I'm not kidding anymore. Don't laugh. No more laughs. All right. Second, uh, a qualify. You know, we could have a qualified types and the type with adornments, like you know, reference, const reference, etc. Is going to expand very nicely to like qualified uh, list of individual elements. Beautiful. So we we start with a qualified type with uh, uh, adornments star ampersand double ampersand, and it's going to expand very uh, nicely as expected. Even better. And you know, start you know, carefully here because we have a sort of a complex, uh, a complex construct here involving a type, a, a list, a type of a, a list of types and the regular type y. And you access even a member, and you put dot 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 after it. And as I said, dot 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 kind of cleverly looks to its left and expands whatever can be expanded. And very nice, it discovers that y is fixed and t is variable and therefore it's going to expand it cleverly as shown, right? So this will be the third expansion rule, okay? Even more interesting, if you have two lists of types, T's and U's, you notice I'm using this convention like T's and U's, so you know, the suffix S is like plural, right? T's and U's, and you know, what happens to be adorned? Dot, 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 well, guess what? They're going to expand in lockstep. They're going to expand in lockstep, okay? Very interesting. And finally, last but not least, we have a function call that's going to, for example, it uses some, you know, some non-veridic stuff, and it also has some veridic stuff. It's going to nicely expand into you know, like applications to each element in the, in, in the list of values. Very nice, right? Okay, so these are expansion rules. So it tells you what you can expand and what it's going to expand into, right? And then there's the converse uh, element, which is where can I expand things? You know, in what context can I expand things, right? So the places where I can actually expand things are an array initializer, I can expand stuff. In a base class specifier, which would go like, you know, template type name dot 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 t's, struct c inherits t's dot dot dot, which means inherits, you know, from everybody, right? Then we have template of type name dot 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 t's, Struct D, you can actually say box of T's. Maybe you want, you want to have some integers here, some primitive types that you cannot inherit, so you box them. So you say, I'm going to inherit box T's, dot, dot, dot. And per the expansion rules that we just, just discussed, this is going to expand nicely as expected, right? All right. And we can, you know, at some point, so we have this guy here and maybe we want to initialize it. Well, guess what? You can actually expand inside the member initializer list. So imagine we're inside the struct uh, D, and we say template time dot 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 use, which is a different thing, and we have D taking use and it forwards them to box of T's. 
da, da, da. So this is going to expand nicely. And there's three more. Three, not four. There are four bullets, but there's three things. I'll explain. Okay, I, actually, let me get, you know, exception specifications. Uh, so, um, variety templates works, work with exception specifications, but except, exception specifications are gone from the language. So this is a sort of one of the false implies anything kind of thing, right? I know they work for a fact, and nobody can contradict me, right? Because <laughs> nobody can prove anything, right? False implies anything. All right, so let's get rid of that guy. So in template argument lists, it's quite interesting. You can actually expand. And in this case, we know that map takes two, three, or four arguments, right, in its parameter parameterization, right? So it's, this is going to work if this happens to be two elements long. It's going to work if it's three elements long. It's going to work with, if it's four elements long, but nothing else, <coughs> right? So this is, uh, you know, this is uh, an, interesting, uh, an interesting example. It just works with certain lists. Uh, attribute lists, uh, uh, I am from the future because there's no attribute that can expand that way. So this is a sort of, uh, it is in the specification, but no, nobody can use it yet because th there's no attribute that's expressed as a type. Uh,